between the 1980s and the 1990s, it was very common to see video cameras recording in the VHS and Betamax formats. Between the 1990s and the 2000s, you had Video 8, Hi8, VHS, and VHS-C. But between the 2000 and the 2010s, something weird started to happen. You started to see a lot of deviations from the norm, from what we were used to, the tape formats. You started to see cameras recording to these little tiny cards that you could just put inside of a slot. You started to see cameras that could record to hard disk drives. You even had cameras that were recording to internal flash storage. But there was something else, something a format that people were already very familiar with as far as video playback was concerned. And then what started to happen was companies begin to manufacture cameras that can record to this format. Enter the DVD cameras. DVD cameras were manufactured by many different companies. Panasonic, Hitachi, Canon, Sony, all of the big names. But today I'm going to focus on one of them, and this is obviously going to end up being sort of a, a series on these cameras. It probably won't be all that coherent because of the order in which I'm going to end up getting them at some point. You know, I end up picking these things up from the thrift store, or eBay, or places like that. But nevertheless, today we're going to be focusing on this camera right here. This is the Sony DCR DVD 403. You can see it's got a number of rounded edges. You know, that's that mid 2000s design aesthetic. They're trying to make it look kind of futuristic. If we take a look here, we can see there's a couple of aesthetics that are pretty interesting. One would be this aqua button here, which I think is probably one of the best Sony design choices of all time. It's just so pretty. Um, you have your DVD logos there wide LCD, model number, backlight compensation, and the easy handycam mode button, Sony logo. It has a 3 megapixel image sensor, more on that in a moment. Carl Zeiss Vario Sonar lens. And then we go around to the front, we can see, uh, starting at the bottom, we have the, the AV connector, which is the only audio video connector for this camera. Above that, we have the built-in flash and the lens itself. Digital zoom advertised, more on that later. And this is the DVD compartment, it's pretty large. It records to these really small eight centimeter discs that you can actually still pick up at Walmart for, in my area, they sell them for $11.96. And it comes in a package of three, but since they're double-sided, you technically get six of them. And it's actually a pretty good deal compared to what I've looked for them for on eBay. Oh, and Sorry about my thumb, if you notice that, it's kind of kind of gross, but... Right here we have the hand strap. It's, this is actually, it's actually a pretty good hand strap, if I'm being honest. Comfortable, it's made of a cloth type of uh, texture, kind of the type that you'd expect to find, like, in a car seat. It's also got this port on it uh, that's labeled the remote port, and it also functions as the LANC jack, so you can plug in different types of accessories to your camera. And we have the little power wheel here. DC input, it's one of the basic Sony chargers. Um, it's kind of hard to get a good lighting angle on it, but it's shaped like that. So any charger that's shaped like that will probably work with it. On the back we have the pull-out viewfinder with the adjustable focus on the side, the photo button, and the zoom control, variable speed zoom. Mode operation, LEDs, the charging light, the recording button, and the battery compartment. I have an NPFH70, but this camera is also compatible with the Info Lithium P batteries. It's one of those cameras similar to the DCR HC28 that can use both the Info Lithium P and the Info Lithium H batteries. On top of the camera, you have the flash button, night shot mode, and underneath this little secret compartment is the active interface shoe for some different accessories. Next to that you have the 5.1 channel surround sound microphone and the 120 times digital zoom advertised once more. More on that in a moment. So when we open up our LCD screen here we also see there's a few more buttons. The display and battery info and the wide selection. Interesting that they put the wide selection as a button. Um, instead of a menu option like they have with some of the other cameras. The certification, all that official information. This is one of the cameras that has the manufacturing date as an actual date uh, rather than a code like some of the other Sony cameras. 
and this one was made in August of 2005. Built-in speaker and of course the reset button. This is the LCD, I'll get to that in a moment. It also has some helpful buttons on the side for zoom and recording control. This camcorder is pretty cool, but there's a number of problems you would have run into if you wanted to buy one of these cameras when they first came out. The biggest problem is the price tag. When these were released by Sony, the price of this camcorder was $1,000. So that's pretty expensive. On top of that, the price of discs at the time were also pretty expensive, and you could only record 20 minutes of video in the highest quality setting. You were really paying a lot of money for a basic camera, and the cheaper Sony cameras could do pretty much all the same thing that these could. So let's look at the specifications, and I'll let you decide whether or not that $1,000 would have been worth it at the time. The image sensor was a 1 3rd inch CCD image sensor, 3,310,000 total pixels. The effective pixels for videos is 2,048,000, and the effective pixels for still photos is 3,048,000. So, it's kind of safe to say, unlike on the newer cameras, that 3.0 is actually an honest number. It's not hideously interpolated like it is on a lot of the newer Sony cameras. The focal distance is 5.1 to 51 millimeters. Uh, it's got a lens filter so you can screw in some different lenses. I'll get to those in a moment when we get to the optional accessories. 30 millimeters by the way. 10 times optical zoom, 120 times digital zoom. Uh, so capable of some pretty interesting distance. The problem is most Sony cameras that have the 120 times digital zoom, it gets to be really, really grainy at that point. It's difficult to make out any fine detail. So you're probably better off sticking to the, the optical zoom. It has night shots, so it can record in zero lux. Of course, if you didn't want to use that, then you could also record into a minimum illumination of five lux, similar to the Sony Handycam DCR HC28. The viewfinder is a color viewfinder with 123,000 pixels, and the LCD is a 2.7 inch color hybrid touchscreen LCD with 123,000 pixels. I don't know what the hybrid part of that is supposed to mean, but it's just a fancy word, I bet. 24 step exposure dial, that's pretty cool. And the supplied accessories, what you would get in the box with this camera, is the ACL25 power adapter, the NPFP70 Info Lithium rechargeable battery. Again, if you have an NPH series battery, you can use those too. The RMT835 remote control, a stereo AV cable, more on that in a moment, a DVD R30 DVD, a USB cable, a shoulder strap, a wrist strap, and the CD-ROM with the USB drivers. Now obviously I don't have any of that stuff because I picked this thing up from the thrift store. And the optional accessories that you could get with this camera is uh, NPFP70 or 90 batteries, some carrying cases, the VCL 2030S telephoto lens, obviously that screws into this lens thread there on the front, the VCL HG, HG2030 high grade telephoto lens. So. Not messing with baby stuff there. The VCL HG0730 wide angle lens. And then there's some tripods, but let's see what the setup menu on this camera looks like, what kind of options it has. And you'll get to see this hybrid touch screen in action. So, and of course it's got fingerprints all over it because that's just what touch screens do. You can see when you start it up, you have the date and the time. You have that it's, uh, it shows that it's in 16 by nine mode. Obviously when you press the wide select button, that changes. You have the 5.1 channel surround sound indicator on top there, the battery time and the recording mode. You can also see it's flashing this indicator here. It's just because I don't have a disc inside right now. Something I forgot to mention was that you'll notice you have a button here that's got sort of a little, a, uh, an arrow on it. Uh, that button's purpose is to play back the most recently recorded scene so you can see if you mess it up or anything like that. So when we press on the P dash menu button, you get to your personalized menu. Um, works similar to some of the newer Sony cameras. Uh, it's got these different tiles on it. And then the last option here, you can set it up to be, you can set each tile up to be an option of your choosing. But I don't really use it. I prefer to just go into the setup menu and um, look for my options this way. 
So in the setup menu for video, you have the program auto exposure, which obviously is going to have the pretty typical exposure modes. You have the spot meter, which is basically just tap to uh, set the exposure. Manual exposure, or, well, it's set to auto right now, but you can change it to manual. White balance, auto shutter, which is just, um, it changes the shutter speed if the conditions are too bright. At least that's what the manual says, but I also noticed if you're in a darker condition, it'll slow down the shutter speed and it'll make it look kind of muddy. Um, it's not ideal if you're using a... Uh, deinterlacing if you're converting it to 60 progressive because then it looks kind of choppy. Spot focus, tap to focus, manual focus controls, super night shot which is basically if it's in night shot and you and the still too dark for the camera to pick up you can turn this on it'll slow down the shutter speed so much that the picture any sort of motion is blurred and fuzzy and terrible. Super night shot in my opinion, not the most useful feature. Uh, the night shot light, the infrared light for night shot. Color slow shutter, not to be confused with auto slow shutter, um, is basically the same as super night shot, except without the night shot. The self timer, digital zoom, you can set between off 20 times or 120 times. Just leave it off. Digital zoom, not the best. Steady shot, the image stabilization. Fader effects, Different digital effects, um, and by different, I mean two. Old movie, which is the stereotypical sepia and filter, and but then there's Lumi key, which is actually pretty interesting. It will take a screenshot of the video and then cut out certain colors. So you can see, I'm waving my hand in front of the camera, but it still has this background here on it. And you can set it between varying degrees at which it'll cut out the colors. And so if I turn this, if I turn it all the way up, it's just going to be a, a screenshot. And so it's pretty interesting. Different picture effects, although there's quite a bit, quite a few less of them than you would see on the tape cameras that Sony had. Demo mode, just a demonstration of all the functions. Typically that's turned on if the camera is a display model at a retail store. Format the disc, finalize the disc unfinalize the disc which is actually kind of interesting because if you're you can only unfinalize the disc if you're using a certain type you can only finalize the disc if you're using DVD minus RW or DVD plus RW discs unfinalize the disc sorry and unless I'm mistaken the disc you pick up at Walmart you cannot unfinalize those this is the disc that you would get at Walmart it is a DVD minus R disc, so you can't unfinalize this disc. Once you write to it and finalize it, that's what's on it. Disc title, just some metadata. Recording mode, high quality, standard play or long play. The mic ref level, um, basically just how loud the microphone will uh, record. The surround sound monitor, so you can see where some of the louder sounds are coming from. Obviously they're coming from the back because I'm behind the camera. The external surround sound microphone, that's just for the, some of the accessories that I believe you meant to plug into the uh, accessory shoe on the top. LCD and viewfinder settings, brightness, backlight level, the color, the viewfinder backlight and the viewfinder wide display. TV type, 16x9 or 4x3, pretty typical. The disc remaining, the amount of time left on the disc. Uh, the remote control, the recording lamp, the beeping sounds. The display output, you can set between the, the AV out and the LCD panel, or just the LCD panel. Uh, the setup rotate, which is the direction it moves when you press one of these two buttons here. I have it set to move up when I press down, and that's basically just up to personal preference. Auto shut off, clock setting, the area setting, the daylight savings time setting, and then the language. So that's it for the settings that you would get when you're in video recording mode. Now let's do the settings for picture recording mode. They're not that different, and you're going to notice in a picture recording mode, you can't set the wide display, so you're going to be stuck with this letterboxed, really squished menu system, which is kind of annoying. I mean, you can see how much smaller it is comparatively, but... So the settings are mostly the same. Um, only difference is you get flash settings which would be the level and the red-eye deduction 
And then you get the burst modes, which is basically it just takes multiple photos at once. The quality of the photos, fine or normal. The image size you can set between 2016 by 1512 or just 640 by 480. And then the file numbering of the pictures. So that's actually it for the picture settings. There's not really a whole lot of them. This isn't really meant to be a picture taking camera. It's a video camera. But enough about that. Let's focus on the uh, playback settings. So there's a couple of rather interesting ones. So you have the different um, uh, the picture settings. This is the recording control mode. To demonstrate this, I'm actually going to go ahead and switch to a different scene where I'm going to show you how you can use this mode to record from an analog format. So the way the recording input works is you need to set it, set the video input, and you can set it between video or S-video. If you set it to S-video, you're going to need an AV cable that has S-video built into it. But the basic Sony cable is going to have just the composite. So you set it to that. You can set the recording mode as well. If we Supposedly, if we put this tape in here and press play, it should show up on the camera, even if it doesn't have a disc in it. And look at that. What do you know? It's going to look weird because it's rewinding, but there you have it. That's the recording control mode. Record images from an analog source like a VCR onto a disc. You can set up a slideshow, more basic disc settings, uh, the volume of the playback. Aside from that, there's not really many other settings here. The USB speed, you should have it on auto if you actually use the USB. Full speed is kind of a misnomer because that's the speed of USB 1.0 and auto is, will use USB 2.0 speed if available. The data code you can have it set between off, date and time, and camera data. All those settings I've already gone over. Then there's calibration um, for making sure the touch screen is accurate. That is your playback settings. One problem with recording to DVDs that I forgot to mention was that DVDs are extremely fragile. I've had a number of instances with this camera and other DVD cameras where like, I put a brand new disc in it, turn it on, and it gives me some kind of error message saying it can't record to the disc. Or other instances where I haven't even taken the disc out, I've just turned the camera on and it suddenly tells me it doesn't like the disc anymore. Something else you'll notice is that when this camera reads to the disc, it actually makes a very audible buzzing sound. And that wouldn't be so bad if it didn't also shake the camera when it did it. So believe me, you'll know it when you hear it and see it in the video. Now I'm going to switch to the test footage here. And one last thing I wanted to mention about these cameras is that it's recording to a DVD. And video that's recorded to DVDs has a good bit of compression to it. So take a look at some of the darker parts of the video and really fine edges and see if you notice the compression.